go. You gotta take it out somehow, you yeah, look at that. This is our old shock plate. We're going to clean it up and look brand new. Hit it with some POR15 and a coat of black. You'll never know the difference. a few comments about people being concerned about the fact that this POR15 does not hold up to UV light. Now that is true and I don't think it'll be necessarily a huge problem with this stuff being under the car, but just for our peace of mind and our sanity, I'm going to hit the rear axle and the shock plates with a quick coat of black just to keep them from fading and rusting and turning into like any kind of chalky paint substance. That way we don't have to, any kind of worries about it lasting long. We'll just hit it with a coat of black and be done with it. For this purpose, we'll be using some Rust-Oleum. That is semi-gloss, and it's just plain black. And it'll hold up well. I've used this on a lot of stuff. I even painted a car with this paint, so I know it works. In the last video, I showed you guys of me installing my leaf springs, and it came with these U-bolts. Now, something you'll see about these U-bolts is the fact that, well, I mean, they look like normal U-bolts. They're round all the way through. Now, what that causes, though, is that whenever you tighten these down, it'll actually crush your axle tube. It'll actually put a little dent inside the axle tube, and it'll cause a weak point. So, what Chrysler did way back in the day, they made these types of leaf springs, and if you can look closely, you can just sort of tell that it's actually flat on the end. And the reason they did that was so that way whenever you tighten up on this U-bolt, it'll actually lay flat against the axle tube rather than crush it. So just to show you a comparison, this is what it came with, the leaf springs did. And you know, they'll work, they sure will work, but they will crush your axle tube. I like to use these because they actually will lay flat against the tube itself. So we're gonna throw these on. These actually came from Man City Racing. I've used these plenty of times before really like these U-bolts uh, that they provide and they're basically just reproduction of the, uh, the factory style and you can get them in different lengths depending on if you have like you know blocks in the back anything like that but I'm gonna hang on to these maybe they'll be used for something else but these are the ones that I'm going to use I'll drop one on there and we'll drop two washer, lock nut. Just like that we officially have our rear axle bolted back in and done. That's an awesome feeling. They look, they look really good. I think they, they match well with the black. I've been using Dr. Diff products for quite a while now and I've always been able to have good results with the products that they've sent. And Cass over at Dr. Diff was kind enough to send their rear disc brake conversion for these eight and three quarter housings. Now this is a 10.7 inch rear disc brake conversion. I opted for the drilled and slotted rotors. You can get just regular standard rotors. Uh, the calipers you can get either in black or red powder coat. And these are the mounting brackets that actually bolt to your housing. And it comes with your flexible uh, brake hoses here. And then this will actually bolt into the hard line as well as all the hardware that you will need to make all of this work. So it's really cool stuff. And on top of that, I ordered these custom e-brake cables to make the car work and function. And these will just mount up to your factory existing cables. By the time you spend all the time to fix everything on a drum brake system, though they're cost effective, they have a lot of moving parts. While this one will stop better, look better, 
and outperform in just about every way possible. We want to make a car that will perform just as good as a new car, if not better. And it just so happens that these will do the trick. Up next on the list are these reproduction style stock length eight and three quarter axles. Now what these have over the factory is, you know, I don't necessarily have to replace the factory axles, but you know, you run into some of the, uh, the issues where these axles on the splines, they can twist over eight, you know, with age and uh, a bunch of clutch drops on this car, I'm sure it had. So these uh, splines can twist and it just makes it a lot easier and a lot simpler to go ahead and replace them. And Dr. Diff provides that. So what they actually do, they give you the option for adjustable tapered bearings or these non-adjustable green bearings. Now I opted to go with these and not only do you get that, but you get the uh, screw in studs for disc brakes. So it makes things a lot easier. I've used these axles in the past on the Charger and on my Dart. They're a great option if you're converting to a big bolt pattern in a Dart. And they're just a great option for peace of mind to make sure that you have what you need to make everything proper and really just perform well. And these things will last forever. They're great units. I've used them plenty of times. I've got faith in them. So we're about to roll up under the car to install the center section for a couple of reasons. First being that I want to show you guys the entire process for reinstalling everything in the car. And the second reason is that I want to make sure that no moisture gets inside the rear axle and to kind of keep anything out of it, any kind of contaminants or dirt. I am actually going to take the center section back out. I'm only putting it in there just as a placeholder. We talked in the last video that it is a 323 and I don't know if that will be my final ratio because it depends on what kind of transmission I get depending on if I can have an overdrive or not. Just a matter of what I can find and what's available to me. I really want to be careful when doing these center sections like this because these suckers are cast iron and they're very heavy. And uh, the main thing is just to pay attention to what you're doing and take your time. If you can't pick it up then take a second retry it, rethink it. So all it takes is a little patience and some upper body strength that I don't have. Perfect. So before we really get too far, we're going to put these bolts back in it and make sure it does not fall out. All I'm going to do is follow the instructions laid out by Dr. Diff. It says install the rear caliper bracket facing inward and toward the rear of the car. Like so, at this point we can go ahead and throw our gasket on that came with the axles. And now we are ready to slide our axles in. It's as simple as this. So be careful, make sure you line it up with the center section itself. You want to get it kind of steady. Work your way around, you'll be able to feel it whenever it... There we go. And we'll take the little flange there, run these bolts on the back side. And once we tighten all that up, we will have an installed axle. And just a reminder from the last video, to tighten up these, you rotate the axle. There's these holes drilled into the axle itself that you are able to rotate. Run your socket in there, tighten it down. Get all five of them in, and you are good to go. At this point, we get to install these very nice looking drilled and slotted rotors. Now, at this point, install our caliper with the bleeder side up, slide it onto the rotor, and slide it up with our mounting tabs on the back. And there are two spacers. Have to go in between the mounting tabs and the bolt. So the bolt is actually up under here, but I found what the trick is is to actually start the bolt up on this top side right here to hang everything up. So I've snugged up the bottom bolt and now I will take out the top one. This is the thick washer, goes back in here. forward and then our bolt the thinner washer goes in on this side 
once all that lines up, if it ever lines up. Bolts right in. One more note on these bolts is that the instructions do say to use red Loctite on these threads. I will go back and add red Loctite, but I just want to show you guys how to do it first. This point here, this is our brake hose mounting tab. I'm going to take these little Allen key bolts. Those just screw right in like that. There's two of them. Get them both started here. When we get to the point of installing our brake hoses, we'll actually take this uh, end right here with the groove in it, and it comes with these locks that the, uh, the brake hose will actually go through and lock into place, and then you'll be able to tighten it down. And you'll go over here and run this open end right here, and there's a bolt. That actually has a hole in it that actually that all the brake fluid will go through. Then we'll run it right where this where this uh, cap is. It'll sit right about like that, and then you'll be able to uh, bolt everything down and tighten it up, and then everything will be secure and ready to go. But then you make sure that you use your uh, copper washers as well whenever you bolt all this stuff in. Now I'm not going to install our brake hoses that come with the the kit yet because I still need to make all of my brake lines on the axle itself and when we get to that point then we can install our hoses. Now I don't want to get anything inside these because they are open. I don't want to get any kind of contamination in it just by letting it sit out in the open air. Now our parking brake cable slips through right here and these are different sizes on the end so if one is too big use the other end and it should work for you. Now in our factory location mounted here on the frame, slides right through. This will go and uh, hook up to our factory cable that we had that we pulled out earlier. And as simple as that, we have a complete rear disc brake conversion setup done. All we like is mounting up those uh, braided steel lines to go to our hard line. Other than that, we're good. Now you'll notice that the rotor itself does not actually sit all the way far back as it could. The reason that is is because well, one, when the wheel is bolted on, it'll actually push the uh, the rotor up against the uh, the flange that it needs to sit against, and two, the uh, caliper doesn't have any kind of uh, brake pressure built up on it because there's no fluid. Once that actually gets in place, it'll center up the uh, the rotor itself when the wheel is off. Got some more stuff that is very exciting in the mail. This is our rear sway bar from Hailwig Products. We have every bit of hardware we will need, including all the mounting points, got bushings, U-bolts, everything in links, all the grease you'll need to get everything working. And this sway bar is adjustable. You have three mounting points that you can use. The further in you go, the, the firmer of a ride it will be. But they say for uh, testing purposes and for you know normal driving, you want to go on this outside hole. So let's go ahead and start tearing into the car and installing the sway bar. So per the instructions, we have added on these bushings here. You can see, greets them. And we want to have the center hump facing down, just like so. We'll be able to take these U-bolts, place them like so on each end. We'll just do one at a time. And then this piece right here, actually sit like so get everything lined up and we can start I gotta add washers to this but I'm just starting it so that way it'll hold itself in place I don't have to worry about making sure it doesn't fall one more time over here Now the instructions are telling us to fully assemble our end links and that includes this bushing right here and a sleeve that goes inside the bushing. Now what you need to do is actually grease inside here, slide that in and then grease the inside of this bushing as well and assemble it that way. That way then nothing whenever it's moving will make any kind of squeak. And there it is. 
this point here, this is where our sleeve comes in. This is what the bolt will ride on. That way it won't chew away at the bushing itself. So what we have to do, again, make sure we put some of this grease on here. And you know, just one end will be perfectly fine. Because whenever you actually set it in the bushing, you'll be able to kind of work it around and rotate it. But I'm just going to kind of spread it around. Make sure that it's got plenty on it. Because like I said, I don't want to be fighting any kind of noises when this thing's all together. And one completed sleeve in there. Now what I actually did after I got the uh, the sleeve to sit flush, took this screwdriver that was just slightly wider than the sleeve itself and then tapped it just ever so slightly because when it was flush on this end, it was actually sitting a little too deep on this end. So once I tapped that with the screwdriver, it was able to line up pretty nicely. At this point we can go ahead and install our end links onto the sway bar itself. And the way that it tells us to do it is to bolt it to the center hole first just for placement purposes because when you drive it you'll need to place it on the outer hole like I said earlier. The reason that is is because the further in you go the stiffer the ride is. We don't want to be driving on the road with this right here because it's going to be riding rough and we just want to put it in this one just for placement purposes and we do that with three washers, a bolt, and a nut. Put the bolt with the washer through the back side and a washer on this end then the end link another washer and the nut on the end and we'll keep it loose just so we can kind of move stuff around and get it fitting where we want to and then at that point we'll actually rotate all of this up up to the frame rail where we will drill our hole, run a sleeve through it, and then run a bolt through it to hold it in place. This is where things can kind of get a bit tricky. So what the instructions say to do is to have the end of the sway bar to actually be parallel with the uh, frame rail here. So what I've done is taken a block of wood and lined it up with the bottom of the frame rail and then that's actually holding up and supporting our end link here. And you can see everything is pretty much parallel. It runs right up into the bottom side of the frame rail you want to make sure that these two are lined up. So just ignore my old fuel lines there, but you can see how everything is running parallel on this side just about. We'll probably have to pick it up just a little bit because the, uh, the U-bolts are actually loose, so it might still be a little low on this side, but basically the bottom here needs to be parallel with the bottom of the frame rail right here. That's what you're going for. So you can see here on the inside of the frame rail, that is the mark where I will be drilling my hole. You see I took calipers and measured it, horizontal line running parallel with the uh, frame rail there is where I marked the caliper and then made a little scratch so that way I could tell exactly where I want it. And it turns out that it's actually just a tiny bit over one and a quarter inches. And it's going to be different for your vehicle, make sure you do it the same. But once I measured that out, then I took a piece of cardstock and ran it around the underside of the frame rail. When I pulled that cardstock tight, I took a paint marker and marked it in the yellow line there and then measured from the bottom of the frame rail 1.25 inches and again this gonna, might be different for your vehicle and then scratched a line where that caliper lined up and then I just made a little arc and where it crosses is where I'll drill my hole. All aboard washers mountain. Ugh. Next stop, Sway Bardsville. Am I right? So there you have it, our sway bar is completed and now we have a complete rear disc brake conversion with our sway bar and everything looks awesome. Everything's bolted in, it's tight and something that I noticed is the fact that uh, the car is actually holding itself up now. We are actually using uh, the suspension of the car to hold itself up. So just a few months back, you know, we tore everything apart. Then we had to redo that frame rail up there and now we've got brand new leaf springs on both sides. They dropped the car an inch. We repainted the housing, we added a sway bar, converted to disc brakes, and we did a lot of really awesome work. 
and it's awesome to see the car finally coming together in the rear axle. The only thing we have left is to add our shocks. So something I wanted to test was wheel fitment. So these are 17 by 9 Anson Sprints and they're styled after the old style, old school slot max. These are fully aluminum and they have a 275 40 uh, brand new Continental tires on it. I bought these off of Facebook Marketplace a few months ago and I just wanted to see how these things would fit. Now they have, if they had a little bit different backspacing, a little bit more backspacing, I think they'd fit a lot better because this tire currently fills up the wheel well very nicely but it's kind of close it's cutting a little bit close on that wheel lip so we might have to do a little modification or get a different size tire one I like the way these look not saying this is what I'll be settling on there might be a different wheel but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what style I'm looking for and I, I really like this wheel and it needs to be polished you can see that it's pretty dirty but with these things polished up and a good tire shine on it, these wheels would pop. Just trying to get some ideas on 17s. Let me know what you guys think about these wheels. I'm a fan of these. I think it fits the car nicely. So we might go with a different style, but I think the size is just about spot on. Those wheels tuck nicely, and you know, the suspension is an inch lower, so it'll settle as we drive it. So good to see this car outside, though, at least. It's been a minute, I won't say that much. Now all we gotta do is just get a game plan for what to do next. You know, do we go with the interior, start working on the engine? I don't know. All sorts of options now. Just check out how much those wheels tuck right there. Man, that looks good. It fills up the wheel well nicely. But it is also very close. I can still fit my hand up there, but just wonder if any kind of like sidewall roll or the suspension flex and it's gone. <laughs> That's what I'm worried about. So we might have to, you know, try something if we can make these wheels fit, but dang it looks good. Check that out. And the car sits way high just because there is no engine in the front, so all the weight's taken off of it. Finally seeing all this together is like way motivational. So cool just to see this rear end actually back together and doing what it's supposed to. Car's back in. We still have we have spring and suspension even though you know there's no shocks in it, but man it acts like it does. So when we get some KYB gas adjust shocks in there, this thing's really going to ride stiff. I mean, that car is going to be tight. It is tight in there. Perfect. I love it. Love the way the inch drop looks. And they'll settle. But man, looks so good. And that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We had a great time rebuilding this rear suspension and finally getting everything sorted out the way that it needs to. And there's still a couple things, a little small final details, including putting in the rear shocks that we have left on the rear axle. But as far as suspension goes, it is pretty much done and it complements well with the front suspension. Now again, we're just test fitting wheels. The car is back on the ground and I'm excited for the fact that it is finally able to roll once more with our new frame rail, new rear suspension, new sway bar, new brakes, new everything. It's looking awesome and the car sits very nicely. It has a really cool stance and we'll get the front turned down when we have an engine in there. There's no way in the front to determine what the ride height should be. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment. You can join the Facebook group. It's at the very end of the video, and there's a link in the description below. Had a lot of cool discussion on there and a lot of cool new members on there sharing their rides and actually asking for advice. It's a really cool community. I love it, and that's where I get the subscriber projects at the very end of the video so if you want to get a chance to have your vehicle featured that's where you need to post it order your t-shirts and your stickers thanks again for watching i'm really excited about this car to finally see it coming together and we've made a ton a ton of really good progress so far we have a lot to do but we're still 
making so much. It's amazing how, how far we've come in just a short amount of time. We just started on this back last fall, so we've really come very far just making all this happen and putting this car together from nothing. It's awesome to see the progress actually come together and it wouldn't be at all possible if it wasn't for you guys. And I gotta thank Dr. Diff for sending the brakes, sending the axles. Uh, Hellwig makes a good product and hope you enjoyed this and hope you are excited for more videos to come and more progress to come. So thanks again. I'll see you in the next one.